So a video here about independent events. Uh, now, probably the best way to talk about it is to talk about two examples. Uh, here I have a coin, and if I flip the coin once, I get heads. And if I flip the coin again, I get tails. And if I flip the coin again, and you, you, you get the picture. Um, now the question is, if I flip the coin this time, the probability of getting heads is one half. Now, if I flip the coin again, the probability of getting coin of getting heads is also one half. It doesn't matter how many times I flip it, and it also doesn't matter what the previous um, event was or the previous uh, outcome was. The probability of a head is one half, and the probability of a tail is one half. Okay, so previous events do not affect future events. Those two events are independent. Let's compare that to some dependent events. Here I have a uh, bucket of um, some, some balls are uh, orange, some balls are white. Now, if I pull, uh, um, no, I'll tell you what there is. There's four white ones and there's four orange ones. Now, if I pull a, um, a ball out at random without looking at it, the probability that it's uh, orange is four in eight or one half. Okay, it is orange. Now, if I put my hand in here a second time, there's only seven um, balls in there, and the probability of pulling out an orange one has changed, because I've already pulled an orange one out. So there's only three left, three out of seven. So the probability of pulling an orange thing out is three and seven. Okay, now the probabilities have changed again. The probability of pulling an orange one out this time, there's three left out of six. So again, the probability is three and six, which is one half. Okay, and now the probability's changed again. There's two orange ones left in here. There's five balls in total, so the probability of pulling an orange one is two in five. And now the probability has changed again. There's two orange balls, four remaining, so the probability is two in four, which is one half. Okay, now the probability of an orange has increased because there's two orange balls in there. There's three balls remaining, so the probability of pulling out an orange ball is two in three. The probability of pulling out an orange ball is 1 in 2. And now the probability of pulling out an orange ball is 0. Done. Those events were dependent because previous events affected future events. So let's consider these two, um, these two sets. People who use social media and people that are young. Okay, so I'm, I don't know, under 25 or whatever. So A dash is not use social media and B dash is old. Okay, so the question is, are these two events, uses social media and is young, are they independent events? Do they affect each other or are they dependent events? Are you more likely or less likely to use social media if you're young? So here's a, a survey, I guess, and we can see that if you're young and you're, sorry, if you're young and you use social media, there's 200 out of 500 people surveyed were young and used social media. Um, 40 people were young and didn't use social media. 40 out of 500 fit into that category, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, is one affected by the other? And the key is to use conditional probability to find out the answer. Because you should remember that the formula for conditional probability is this. Now, if events are independent, think about what that means. They don't affect each other. So, if it says the probability of A given B is equal to all of this stuff, let's just focus on this part of the formula. The probability of A given B happens. Well, if two events are independent, the probability of A happening given B happened should be equal to just the probability that A happens. Okay, so for instance, the prob uh, I flip a coin. We know these are independent events. I flip a coin. Okay, heads. Now, what's the probability that this coin toss is a tail given the first coin toss was a head? Now, the answer is just one half. It doesn't, the previous event doesn't affect the other event. So this given B thing for independent events doesn't really change anything. 
So for an independent event, we can say, we can say that for independent events, the probability of A given B will be equal to just the probability of A. So a test for independence is exactly this. If you know the probability of A given B, you could compare it to the probability of A. If the two were the same, you could say that they were independent events. If the two were different, you could say that they were dependent events. That's one test for um, independent events. Now we can take this one step further because if we can say that if two events are independent, then the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A, then we could also say that if two events were independent, I could take this formula, get rid of, rid of probability A given B, and just turn it into the probability of A. Now, that is only for independent events. So, for independent events, we can say two things. We can say that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A, because B doesn't affect A. We can also say that because that's true, for independent events, we can say that the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B over the probability of B. That's a useful formula. But what's an even more useful formula is rearranging that a little bit and saying that the probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And that formula and that formula are very, very useful because if two events are independent, then this formula would be true and this formula would be true. And now that we have those two really important bits of information, for independent events, these two formulas are true, we can use this formula to test whether these events are independent. Because if they are independent, then the probability of A intersection B will be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. And now we just need to take that and put in our information and see if that's true. Now, the probability of A intersection B is 200 over 500. The probability of A uh, the probability of A is 300 in 500. And the probability of B is uh, 240 in 500. Now, if I um, multiply this by this, I don't know what I'm going to get. I get 36 over 125. And if I then take 200 over 500 and simplify it just a little bit, I get uh, 125 over 50. I can simplify that further, but I've put them over the same denominator to show you an important thing. This is not equal to this. Now, we said that if two events are independent, then this will be true. We've put those events, social media and being young, into that formula, and it's not true. Therefore, not independent. or therefore dependent. All right, I've spent a long time on this and that's because I think that it's a little bit uh, difficult to wrap your head around. Important to understand what the difference is between a dependent and an independent event. Important to know that these two formulas will be true if uh, two events are independent. Um, good job. Copy it all down.